Here's now and talk about zombies. Good morning, Nathan. Good morning. All right, my co-host is not Larry. Uh, I'm sorry, this is April Fool's show. My co-host is usually Larry. Uh, but we have Andrea sitting in this morning, and Andrea's going to introduce you. Yes, hi. Welcome, Nathan. Um, we're interested in hearing about your Idiot's Guide to Zombies, but it sounds like you've written several Idiot's Guides, which also include guides to werewolves and vampires. Is that true? Or guides to the paranormal? The paranormal. I, I, not, the, not, the, not vampires. <laughs> you haven't reached vampires yet. Okay. <laughs> Anyway, as, as I understand it, you are a comparative religious studies um, professor? Uh, I used to be, actually. I'm not a professor anymore. I'm a technical writer now. Okay. Um, I actually used to teach uh, mythology and English. Interesting. Okay, so that's what got you into the subject of zombies, werewolves, and various assorted other creatures? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I started uh, studying mythology as a child, and uh, it just kind of became a lifelong thing for me. And... Uh, Somewhere over the last five years, it, it got switched over to uh, you know demonology and the paranormal uh, in relation to mythology. So, uh huh, uh huh. Would you want to tell us a little bit? You know, I, I mean, I absolutely love zombies and always have loved them since I was a child. But one of the things I could never figure out is what are the real characteristics of a zombie? Well, it depends on what kind of zombie we're talking about. Uh, most monsters, uh, they go through a kind of a, what I call belief shift over, you know, a few hundred years. <clears throat> Usually, originally, they start off with some kind of a supernatural paranormal cause, and zombies are no different. Originally, the word zombie actually comes from Mzambe, which is uh, a Yoruban word from Africa. And uh, those were supposed to be, um, in Haitian voodoo, people whose souls had been... Uh, taken over by a boker or a kaplata, basically a, a, a voodoo sorcerer. Like a wizard. And, uh, and then raised from the dead. <clears throat> However, now we know uh, very few people really believe that, uh, that, uh, that Haitian voodoo can bring a person back to life. And we know that now that it's a trick, you know, done with a poison called the chetrotoxin, uh, mixed with uh, a number of hallucinogens. And then it's basically just a scam where the person, the person literally believes they're undead, but they're not. <laughs> uh, which is kind of strange. You mean and first then, you hit them with the neurotoxin, then you hit them with the hallucinogenic, and then they think that they've died and come back to life? The actual zombie thinks that? Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, they, um, what they do is they hit them with the tetrodotoxin, the zombie powder, and it makes the person appear dead. And in Haiti, you have to understand that, that there are very few uh, licensed doctors, and, the, and what doctors there are, they have very limited resources. So... They don't have really um, electronic instruments that can check to see if a person really is dead or not. And a lot of times they just inter the person right away. So the person's buried that evening, and that night the voodoo priest will come in, uh, dig them up, throw uh, basically another powder to wake them up, which is used, which has a, a horribly, horribly potent uh, hallucinogen in it called datura. And when they come to, they're under the influence of this datura. And uh, they have an uh, elevated heart rate. I mean, uh, they actually get this incredible adrenaline rush, and they open their eyes, and the person, the, the kaplata tells them uh, that they have been raised from the dead and are now their zombie slave, and they believe it. And there have been a number of recorded cases of people who have turned up later who were thought to be dead. Uh, you know, Clarvius Narcissus, which is a gentleman in Haiti who was thought to have died in 1984, showed up about, about 15, 16 years later at his family's uh, estate, uh, to their, much of their surprise, and found out that he had been the slave of a zombie, uh, a zombie slave of a Haitian uh, voodoo priest for quite all that time. Well, so, yeah, it, it's an odd uh, situation. <laughs> what do they do with these slaves? I mean, what, what's their purpose? Just well, they work? actually use them, they use them as slaves. They make them work on plantations. They actually, uh, uh, a lot of times, sell them, uh, rent them out to local plantation owners as cheap labor. Unbelievable. All right, so zombies have been around for a while, and uh, there are many different types of zombies in the literature and, and, and in history, but one of them really caught my eye in your book, by the way, which is very well written. It's really uh, uh, pulled me in, and that's the Chinese mythology Shang-Chi. Uh, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. Shang-Chi. Mm -hmm. let's, let's explore this one, because this one has some really interesting features, this creature. Well, the Chen Chi, it's interesting because a lot of people call it the Chinese vampire, and it's really a lot more like a zombie 
because it doesn't really retain very much intelligence. Uh, it's, it's basically all of the horrible primal urges of, of a human being in an undead corpse, which is a lot of what the modern zombie is like. Um, the Chang Chi uh, literally means hopping corpse. Uh, <laughs> primarily because of the, because of rigor mortis sets in, the idea is that they can't move very well. So all they can do is kind of hop around. <coughs> and um, they're very... Um, they, they like to eat people. Uh, as they get older, they get better at moving, and they like to rape women. Uh, that's a very common myth is... You know, women who give birth to these demon spawn children because they were raped by a chang chi. And, um, the, but the chang chi, the interesting thing is that, uh, there's some strange rules about the chang chi. Uh, you know, if you want to kill one, uh, one, the number one way to do it is to make it listen, make it hear thunder for some reason. Uh, for some reason, the idea of thunder scares the crap out of them and it can even kill them. <coughs> one other way is to sh- shoot them with a gun. Uh, apparently, uh, the, <laughs> that works on a chang chi which the sad part is if you shoot someone uh, and they're not a chang chi they're probably going to die anyway but uh, the chang chi their hair um, initially has a small amount of white hair in it and as they get as they, as they are undead longer they get more and more white hair and the more white hair they have denotes how powerful they are so if you run across a chang chi and they have an entire head of white hair you're in deep dookie, basically, because uh, that means that they probably can fly, shape shift, turn into fog. Uh, they can use magic. Um, they're impervious to most non uh, non magical weapons. Uh, and, and at that point, you're probably going to have to employ the services of a Tao priest uh, to come in and take care of it. And actually, have a, a class of Tao priests who come in and are trained to destroy a Zhang Shi. And uh, they have these special magical swords made out of coins or a special type of wood. They have a, a, a bell that they use to, to return the chang chi back to its grave. And no one was real sure exactly what happens once they get it back to the grave because no one's really ever written it down. So, but yeah, chang chi is an interesting take on the zombie because it's kind of somewhere in between a zombie and a vampire because, it, uh, you know, obviously modern zombies, we don't think of them as having any special abilities. And even voodoo zombies... You know, they, they don't really have any special abilities aside from the fact that, you know, they're supposed to be dead and walking around. Yeah, and part of the ways you kill them or affect them, you write things down on pieces of paper and magically the paper flies and ends up on their forehead or something like that? Yeah, that's, uh, well, the, 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 you could, it's, it's, a, it's a prayer that's written on a small slip of paper. You can do this in Shinto as well. Uh, for example, if a person is thought to be demon-possessed, you can touch them on the head with a slip of paper uh, that has a, an incantation written on it, and it's supposed to dispel the spirit. Uh, and so, yeah, there are the same kind of methods exist for the Chang Chi, where you can write uh, information down, a little, a little incantation or prayer on a slip of paper, and... In the movies, there, there are actually some kung fu style movies that, that show this where you know, they throw this slip of paper and it, and it, you know, flies to the air like a rock and hits the zombie in the head or the chunky in the head and, you know, they fall to the ground. I can imagine that in real life it's probably not that easy. <laughs> yeah, and, and my, my comment to this creature, it seems like it's a creature that the Chinese let get more and more and more powerful, and as it gets more powerful, the things you use to kill it or whatever control it don't work, and you have to keep inventing new ways of controlling it. It's very inter- very Chinese in that way. Is that correct? Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah. It's, 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 the same method won't always work. You know, when it's a young chang chi, uh, something as simple as throwing a line of rice across a threshold will keep it out. And it doesn't you know, like to cross uh, water or certain things like that, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you can even beat one with a broom, uh, actually, uh, <laughs> is, is one way of doing it. I think they wrote that for uh, for Housewives, maybe. I don't know, but the, the, you could beat uh, a chang chi uh, away from your home with a broom if it's a young chang chi, because it won't be very powerful, and uh, it's fairly weak and can't move very well. But the interesting thing is, you know, the, the chang chi might actually come from back when the plague hit China. That might have something to do with some of those stories where you know, people were prematurely buried and then somehow made their way out of their tomb or, or, uh, or coffin and returned home, you know, obviously weak and still sick, and were beaten away by their own relatives <laughs> with, <laughs> with a broom. And so that someone probably said, hey, you know, we use a broom and it works, so that became part of the lore. 
Well, you know, Nathan, that makes me wonder, you know, this, this idea of zombies. I mean, there are a lot of people through history that were buried alive when all we had were mirrors to see.